Good evening. Welcome to the Paranormal Experience with Kat Hobson. This has been one of those technical nightmare afternoons, and so all kinds of things are going on. There were some operator troubles that went hand in hand with that, but that's kind of par for the course. I am not at my desk in Birmingham. I am in Gulf Shores, hence Parrots. It is Parrot Head Weekend. This is when I would normally be in Key West, but we have moved the event to Gulf Shores, Alabama. So I'm with all of my best friends from all over the world in the Parrot Head Nation, as well as some of my paranormal friends too. But tonight I am supposed to have Carl Anderson. There is a confusion somewhere, but I have someone that I absolutely love talking to. I love being around. I love working with. And that's my friend Denise Pridemore, host of the Paranormal Pride and co-founder with her husband of Pride More Paranormal. Hey, or Paranormal Pride. Hi. Yep, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for asking me to fill in. And when hopefully if Carl shows up, he'll take my place. But well, we can just I'm here for now road, and I'm huh? happy to be here with you. <laughs> Well, for the record, you're on the road right now yourself. So, yes, we're coming right. to you live somewhere near St. Louis. <laughs> somewhere near St. Louis. So, and yep, under somewhere. other circumstances, we would be closer together. <laughs> so, did you hear I was coming into town and that's why you went north or, I mean, seriously? No, this was planned. Um, what we did is we planned to let's say surprise some people yeah in at McPike mansion over the weekend it's our an, it was our annual camp out weekend yes and you know it's an, an invitation only event so you know i've been pretty much you know i was the lead volunteer for years and years so yes. we just called and said nobody knows we're coming so keep it a secret but we wanted at least to let you know we were coming you know the um, Sharon Ludke and just her walk family. In on yeah. Yeah. And uh, which really surprised her, but she was so excited. And she goes, I didn't tell anybody. She goes, I swear I didn't tell anybody. And, and I said, well, I told a couple people, but I knew that those people weren't going to tell. So right. you were one that knew. And when we got to McPike, we drove by and we saw our friends all there and we had hoped to get there before they did so that we could hide and, oh you know, gosh. maybe, maybe, well, instead we drove up on them and Ron goes, is this a private or event or can anybody join? And <laughs> a couple people ran off and started crying. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so it, it was a, a very big surprise to everybody there. We were welcomed with open arms and, Everybody was so glad, and and it was funny. Right after we went over to see Sharon, the first thing she said is, "Denise, can you take? Can you do this? Can you do this?" And it's just <laughs> like, apparently, she's very, very, um, very used to me coming and going like that, and being able to tell me what to do, pick up right where she left off. Oh, sure, so that's what I, good friends do. So in, yeah, so I spent half the night telling people where to go and where to park and, you know, what not to do and what to do. And, and, uh, she'd asked me to give somebody a tour. And I said, you know, I haven't been here in three years. I said, I think it's best that somebody who's been here does that. And, uh, but I made sure everybody felt at home and taken care of and all that good stuff. Like I always do. And we spent all, you know, we were up until 3 a.m. We got a five hour nap, got up, started working again. Right. Um, then we stayed over there until uh, about 2.30 and got to have fun at the, uh, oh, Golden Corral. Ah, uh, Never fun at Golden Corral. <laughs> we got to find a new place. Just saying. Uh, Golden Corral is too expensive. For it has gotten really people. expensive. Yeah. But it is, um, even with a discount. Yeah. 40 bucks is a lot for two people. So I would, but I would go to, you know, any place <laughs> that's 
you could get that. You could pay 40 bucks anywhere for two people. That's, yeah, but it, but you get better food. Yeah. You know, so, and of course we are, you know, we're spoiled. We got all that lovely seafood and stuff out there in Pensacola and Gulf Shores and, and all around us. Yeah. So, you know, Golden Corral is not top notch. I, I, <laughs> I'd say we probably would have done better at Burger King, but we did that. We hung out and yeah. say hi to Ron. Well, you wouldn't have had better. Okay. Hey, hey, Ron. This so, is Ron. So this is Denise's husband, the other half of. Pyramid oh, I didn't know you. I thought you just yakking away. Well, <laughs> we, are we are yakking, yakking, yakking away. away. You're all. You're okay. always welcome but, to join yeah. our yaks. So, but we had a great time with everybody, and I got a phone call um, on Sunday evening saying, "Hey, I can't tell you who, but somebody contacted us and asked us if we could meet them over there on Friday night." So we're going back on Friday night and uh, going to stay over there. And then we're going to meet somebody there on Saturday and then head out to Ashmore Estates. So we ended up taking what was going to be yeah. just a hey, one trip to McPike is now three trips to McPike and then Ashmore. And uh, we did do a walk. We did do a walk around in uh, Franklin, Tennessee. Did you? And that town is beautiful. Isn't it though? That's where so, College Grove is a little town out, a smaller town outside of Franklin. And that's where my dad lived for like the last 10 or 15 years of his life. He would commute back and forth to Birmingham. And that whole area is beautiful. And that is where my favorite band, lead singer, um, Haley Williams of Paramore is from Franklin. So she was singing around there when she was a wee thing. So oh, she's the one Lauren that did has a couple pair more shirts. Well, you know, they did um, the theme in twilight. So that in the first twilight. So they're hmm. very, yeah. It's um, decode is the song. So how did we get here? I'll have to check that out. Yeah. Yeah. I know Lauren. What kind of band is it? Paramore. Yeah. They're a uh, headband. Kind of alternative. Yeah. Alternative 2000s. It would have been yeah. one of the ones that I, that we took what, Lauren to. Like rock. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Yeah. 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 And so they played they Hangout Lauren Fest. All kinds and, of yeah. Well, I was lucky yeah, enough. We took that, Lauren um, to punches. Well, They've played Hangout Fest, and I was working as a lifeguard down here for it. And I had finished my my shift when they came on, and I was like, I'm so over there. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm coming through in my uniform. Let me through. It was great. So. Oh. But. I know Lauren just loved them um, when they were, uh, when she was going to concerts all the time. And yeah. if she had known, well. Once she finds out about Hangout Fest, she may end up being over there. So, well, that would be uh, fine. They're, this year they're doing a different thing. There's a country music singer who is doing a having his own music show during the Hangout weekend. So, I'm not sure what that involves long term for Hangout Fest, if it's done or mm -hmm. if it's coming back or what. I don't know. But it's going to be a country music festival. And of course, I am in Gulf Shores right now because it is Parrot Head Week. And with mm -hmm. the thing that I used to go to Key West every October for with the winches for a week. And got hurt. Or more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Got hurt. <laughs> Crashed and burned. Did not even get a drink Crashed the first burn. day. I just got off the plane. That's when I broke my knee. So. <laughs> And for uh, those that don't know, I am such a badass that I actually had a football player injury. It's called a tibial plateau fracture. And I had to be completely non-weight bearing and really high for three months. So, um, cause I couldn't do physical therapy. I couldn't do anything to help it. And so now I don't limp <laughs> and I walked 10 miles Yay. in one day in Scotland. And in Scotland, that's something because it's cobblestones and rocks. Oh, so. yeah. 
Well, it was well, cool. You know, that reminds me, my guest on Monday night is Rick McCollum. I know. <laughs> no, you didn't. It's the he's first time with that me I the night before him. Halloween. What? Well, he asked me, he goes, he goes, why haven't you had me on before? And I said, because Kat That's always you. had you on. So <laughs> when we were on the same network, it just didn't seem right. Oh, please. You know, to get your backup guy all the time, you know, because you got, <laughs> I mean, he was your backup guy. If nobody else was there, he would jump in. And, and so I never does, knew when you were yeah. going to have him on. Yeah. But now, you know, yeah, we're kind of on the same network, but we're not. Yeah. So it's not that bad. No, so because he's coming in he, with me the night before Halloween. So, yeah. So he's coming is, on with me on Monday. Yeah. And then so, I'm Wednesday. Yes. But you're going to have so much fun with him because he is, well, A, yeah, he's my best guy friend. And he's the only person David trusts to take me out of the country. Right. And I hmm. always laugh and say, it's the only man my husband lets me run off with. But because he knows that Rick is <laughs> Rick is some sort of a Knight Templar from way back in reincarnated. So he he kind of makes sure that I'm OK and safe and everything. And um, and David knows he'd go to the map for me because he and David like each other, too. So, well, that's but, good. Um, so, Where are you going next year? Ireland. Ireland. OK. Yeah, We're getting our passports updated. Well, I'm going to tell you, hello, Carl Albertson. Hello. Our hero. You're doing but good. You look like you are. Yeah. I was getting worried for you. I just wanted to make sure you were okay, first and primarily. Yeah. So, but Denise, you need to do that because there's still spots open on that tour. Oh, okay. When is it? It's um September of next year. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, we got. It. Yeah, we'll we'll look it up and find it. So, Carl, I was filling in for you. Okay. I was I being a uh, a backup producer. Oh, <laughs> and, that's all right. And Did and, you get the car running. Yeah, and well, I called yeah. you, and it went straight. It didn't work. I figured you were working on it. Oh, I was and, doing uh, some stuff. Is Tammy's like, phone oh, off, too? I got to get on here real quick. Well, <laughs> I'm just glad you're okay. I was just worried for you. Oh, I, I'm all so, right. Good. Okay. Well, good deal. I am going to let you guys have your show. <laughs> I am so grateful I got to come on with you. I am, and too. Carl, I'm glad yeah. you and Tammy are okay, because I called both of you, and neither phone would go through to anything. So, but Denise, really? before you go, just letting you know what, but before you go, it's Secret Ireland Tours. So, Secret Ireland, Secret Ireland. my Herndon, May, my Herndon, May right? Herndon. Okay, yes, yep. But and Carl, we will see you on Saturday, right? Won't see we me will. on Saturday though. But when you get there, somebody needs to give Robin Terry a great big hug, please. If, if he's there, I, we will. Yes. He might be there with all the other stuff going on before. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, there's a good chance he could. Yeah, so. but well, he is somebody that I really enjoy a lot. And he actually came to Birmingham to Sloss one time. And we got together and had breakfast Ooh. and stuff. So he's a good man. Yeah. So, but mainly well, have all the fun. I, I hope he's there. Yeah, yeah I he hope is, he is. Oh, we will him. have fun. It's hard not to. Well, thank you. I agree. He's such a good man. So yeah. you guys have a great night and thank you guys. And make sure you check out the Paranormal Pride on Monday night at 7 p.m. Central. Right on the Bill of Rights Network and the Paranormal Pride pages and wherever, pretty much wherever you're Everywhere. watching this now, except yeah. for one page, you'll be able to see it. And my guest, mm -hmm. like I said, is Rick McCollum. And maybe we'll find out some secrets about Cat from Rick. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll have to give him a call right quick. So, but, okay. Because well, he night. has some. Love you, Kat. <laughs> I love you guys. Well, I'm sure. Y'all have fun. Right. Bye. See ya. Love right. you. Bye. Bye. Hey, Coral. Hello, Cat. 
How are you tonight? I'm doing real good. How are, are you, you frazzled? Doing? Yeah, a little frazzled, but I'm in great shape. Well, I'm just glad that you're here because, you know, for anyone that might not know, Carl Albertson is somebody who just helps people randomly. He's a really fantastic friend. He's a good man. He's a retired Army veteran, which, by the way, thank you for your service because Army has my heart. I think that, um, I think that the Bill of Rights Network that you are the the lead investigator with and do all the things with. And then um, I have just lost my train of thought. Paranormal Nation Radio. Yep. And which, by the way, I called and interrupted your show the other <laughs> night when I called Denise. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's all but, right. That's no problem. But I'm so glad that you're here because, you know, we we talk at least two nights a week, right? right? But I don't know your history, not much about it. And I know that that when I was struggling to learn how to do this, you reached out to me and you just kind of took it and make me look good, which probably a blonde against all this yellow back here is not the best look, but that's the different kind of looking good, right? Right. So, um, you know, you help so many people and you have so many shows and you have, you have so much respect from me because of all the things that you support. You're, you find the most interesting people like the gentleman who is currently walking through Ukraine, which is really scary. It's gotten scarier now. Right. Um, well, he's back home now. He's in Nashville right now. Oh, well, thank goodness. Because, you know, North Korea is sending troops to Russia to use in Ukraine. And the world is getting crazier by the hour right now. Oh, it is. And, you know, I really feel like that these are some scary times. If you were not paying attention, you might not, you know be as in tune to that maybe. Right. But yeah. I think that, you know, there's so many people that we both know who have, you know, your friend walking through Ukraine to raise awareness. My friend who was going back and forth from Poland into Ukraine to, to bring the children out and take them back to the Netherlands. And, you know, that still goes on because there are still children being damaged in the fighting. And I think that it's really, there's a different level of negativism here. And just for the record, those are not my dogs because I am in Gulf Shores. So that's a random fluff as my dog, Fufu as my <laughs> granddaughter calls them. But, um, I think that there is some some activity afoot that is that has been unleashed somehow. Do you think that's a possibility? Yes, I do. I believe that's here in the last six months. I've heard a lot of people say that <clears throat> a lot of supernatural stuff has been ramped up. Yes. And everything. I don't know if it's because of <clears throat> what I believe. It's the mood of the people here in this country. Yes. A lot of them are depressed. And we know that evil always picks on the depressed. Yes. And stuff. So that's one way to look at it, I believe, that way this country has been going you know there's a lot of people out here worried depressed upset so why wouldn't it ramp up well and there's so much animosity going between different groups that animosity is key in that also because the 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 second ghostbusters maybe with the uh -huh. pink stuff flowing under the library under new york you know 
that was a really good illustration for the negativity that we can breed ourselves. You know, we, we just create that. It's, and it, nothing is in a void. And so all the vitriol that you hear people spewing at each other, you know, you have wars going on on the other side of the world. You have really kind of warring factions right now in this country. There, there's not war, but there's so much civil unrest. Right. Yeah. And I really think that we know negativity breeds negativity. And I think that's kind of what we're seeing. Yeah, I do too, because, you know, there again, we're in some tough times right now yeah. that a lot of people has never seen before and thought they'd never ever see it. But yeah. depression, upset, you know, everything like that. You're finding Anger. out. I mean, through depression and with things going in the spiritual world, look, every time you turn on the news, you're hearing something about drugs this and drugs that, that are being picked up and, and the fentanyl problem and everything. Yes. Well, we know the spiritual world, especially on the evil side, goes after people who have addictions yeah. like that with alcohol, drugs. Because they know they can get control easier to them. I agree. Yeah, we have a lot going on right now. And especially this time of year, you know, being close to Halloween. And you got yes. the holidays coming up. So Halloween, everybody's always thinking decoration ghosts, ghost this, ghost that, ghost that. The word ghost comes out so it's in everybody's mind if the spirits read minds they know they're they're talking about decorations but they're also talking about them at the same yeah. time so that makes a lot of sense and then of course you got the holidays where everybody's supposed to be happy and joyous but most people are sad because sad things have happened during the holidays or they've lost loved ones you know, right. if they have a loved one that's not going to be there this year or, you know, and we also have a lot of active duty deployment. Yes, we and do. And so people aren't home for the holidays. And, you know, holidays as a rule are so tough anyway. If you if you have lost someone, you know, I. It took. When my dad died. That was one thing, but it was expected and he died at home. And um, when my mom died, it was not as well structured, the environment. Mm -hmm. And it was very me and her, you know, and because her caregiver that was designated had abdicated and you know, yes, it was. Took her money and everything. So it was just really an awkward, bad time. And when my mom passed, it was because it was my first time with being the person that was there, right? I mean, right. and it was a totally different crossing from my dad's. And it was hard. So I came home and I guess, obviously, I seem to be getting emotional about that, thinking about it. But it wasn't because I couldn't take care of her. It wasn't because I minded taking care of her. It was because I don't think I did. I don't think I would was the best person for that choice. There were other people that were supposed to be helping that I would have learned a lot from. But you do what you can in a situation and, you know, you and I both know we believe that there's an afterlife where people can communicate with us and 
I'm pretty sure, I hope she knows that I did the very best that I knew how to do. And so that's all you can do, right? There's that's not another step with that, you know, right. That's what you can do is what you do. Right. But so I've noticed that in, when this event that I'm at now used to be held in Key West, I went down to Key West for 20 years to go to this. So, um, and now it's in my town, but down in Key West, there is a lot of different faiths and there's a lot of no faith, right? Mm -hmm. Of hedonism, of just agnosticism and it's really a different environment from most places, but Key West has a lot of ghosts. There's a lot of spirits that wander around there. And it's very interesting to see the first time I went with my group of girls, when I was investigating, I took a couple of K2s, right? Right. And so, you know, just walking through, like near our house, we'd get activity. And one of the things that you and I were going to talk about tonight is equipment. Right. As well as the, the environment. And I'm the one doing all the talking. You're the guest. That's all right. You're, you're doing fine. Right. But, but I yeah. wanted to show you because I have something that is kind of new to me. And I have a pink K2. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah. And I got my friend Lori a purple one because she loves purple. She wears purple shoes. She wears purple pants. If she could drive a purple car, she would drive a purple car. She is the purple girl. I just look at this because I thought, well, I'm a girl. Right. All the but boys that, have the black ones. Right. That's unique because usually all K2s are either black or gray. Yes. And it works really great. So, and the green is staying on. So obviously there's a cell phone or uh, the Wi-Fi is on. Right. So, and that is, yeah. And that's something else I wanted to talk about because like, here's my Wi-Fi somewhere in there. Ta -da. Yeah. And so this is just, just green away from it. But if I bring it to it, whoops. Yeah. I'm still trying to get the hang of this. Yeah. But you know, so yeah, that is where... That. Yeah. And so your false negatives, false positives are always going to be there. And that's what exactly. I tried to explain to them in Key West. Well, yeah, that's what you got to explain on that device. A lot of them use them when you first go into a place you're going to investigate. You check walls where electrical plug ins or where you think. A lot yeah. of people will try to reach up to the ceiling and check because there's wires running. Very few people will check the floor where yeah. wiring are ran underneath the rafters, the floor yes. joists, right? Yeah. But once you get all that figured out, because if you've got electricity in the floor and you set that K2 on a coffee table mm -hmm. above that floor, yeah, it's going to pick stuff up because the electricity in the floor is within two foot of it. Yeah. So a lot of people has got to, they use them in different ways. You know, they come in handy. Now, if you take it out to a location like our cemetery that we uh -huh. go to, there's no electrical over uh, lines overhead. The ground has never been dug into as far as putting electrical or any of that stuff in. So if you set a K2 out there and you don't have your cell phone or nothing electronic around it and it still starts going off, Mm -hmm. then there's where the question comes up. Where is this energy coming from? Yes. And if you put it on a marble or limestone headstone, it'll go off because there's energy in the limestone. You know what? That is interesting because I've seen that happen. In fact, that happened in Scotland when we were there and mm -hmm. Because Rick sat on somebody's crypt kind of a thing because his knees were going out. And he was like, I just need a minute. Yeah. And so 
he had his K2 in his hand and he, he told the spirit there, I just need to rest for just a second, just a second, mm-hmm. you know, and I hope you don't mind. I don't mean any disrespect. Well, that K2 hit all five. And it was like, Rick was like, so you want me to get, to get up? And it was like, all five. Yeah. Move your butt, buddy. <laughs> so it was so funny, but yet, you know, you're absolutely right because limestone, that's where the stone tape theory comes from, right? Limestone holds energy. So I think where he was, was buildings are built out of limestone blocks. Yes. Foundations or the entire building. Yes. Yeah. A lot of energy in it. Lots of it. But you were showing that. I'm going to show you something. All right. Show and tell. Yes, it is. Now, this is about the only spirit box that I have. I don't care for the PSBA 7, 8, 5, none of that. Yeah. It drives that noise. It drives me crazy. I have have them, but I can't use them. Right. So, you know, KD Stafford. I do. The mad scientist. The genius. That's right. Here is the oh ink box from KD Stafford. You have your Tell adjustment me. knob for your speed on it. Now, what's cool about this is it not only has uh, FM radio, mm-hmm. it has shortwave radio. Really? So there's different frequencies, right? Right. Now, what's cool is you have a USB connector up here, right Mm -hmm. there. And you have an SD card reader over here. Now, you have any idea what those are for? I would guess that you're going to be recording what's coming through it. No. What are you doing? Okay. I'll give you a perfect example. If you was at Gettysburg, out there at the war zone, Mm -hmm. on a USB disc, I would have recorded black powder cannons and all that. Plug it in, put it over to the uh, USB, it'll play the noise out, and then you switch it back over to the radio and listen to the spirit box. Holy wow. Same thing Katie with is just so car. ridiculously cool. That's yeah, neat. Yeah, he and makes them, and it's got a flashlight built yeah. into it and stuff. And the cool thing, it has a rechargeable battery already in it. I love that. You just plug it in. It's got the funky little cord on the back here. Plug it yeah. in and plug it in, charges it, or it runs on D batteries. Either way. Well, I guess I will be hitting him up. And the cool thing, it is signed by K.D. Stafford. There you go. I was there when he signed it. That's cool. Which he only lives about an hour away anyway. Yeah. But yeah, I use it quite a bit on investigations. Still getting kind of used to it to see which frequency brings out the most. What have you gotten with it? Ah, I've gotten some words come out of it. But there again, we're dealing with a frequency, a radio frequency Mm -hmm. that, see, I was in communications when I was in the military. Yeah. Okay. Radio waves. Anytime you say anything, like we're saying right now on the internet, going out, right. radio waves through radios, they're going to bounce around in our universe almost indefinitely. Mm-hmm. Right? So, with that going on, and this scans radio frequencies. So, the only way I could verify it was any location you're at. You take a map 
of 100 miles around you and find out every radio station there is in that area. And that when you're going to do your recording that night, you'll have to have a recorder set on every one of those radio stations. Because, say, say at 8.03, we started at 7 o'clock, and at 8.03, this thing said hello. Right. Okay. Say I got five radio stations in the area. So I'd have to go through those five recordings and go up to 803 and see if anybody on any of those radio stations said the word hello. Then I could actually say I can verify it. Right. Before that, I can say it said it. Whether it came from that, bounced out of outer space through one of the words going across. You know, I'm waiting for somebody on Halloween to do an investigation. And they got a spirit box out and War of the World starts playing through their spirits box. The Orson Welles. Because that would be fun. Around. You know, that was our first trial balloon for disclosure and we failed miserably. Uh-huh. And so many people died. So. But yeah, I use that type of equipment. Now, at Ashmore, I'm going to use one of my newest cameras that I have that yeah. I can guarantee nobody's ever used on the investigation. How so? It is actually for deer hunting. To film your deer hunts. Right. But it has night vision built into it. Handy. So it's a handy little deal. Runs yeah. on an SD card and everything, rechargeable. And you can get this on Team U for $17. Get out. Yeah. And it's adjustable for your lens to zoom in, zoom out. And uh, I mean, the night vision on it is really good. Okay. Really good. I was shocked and stuff. But yeah, that's the newest thing I do. And of course, Every paranormal person usually has a camera. Oh, yeah. To take photos with and stuff. Of course, you got to have your digital recorder. Must have. And stuff. Take that. And then, of course, me and Pastor Gary. Yeah. Use our dowsing rods. Absolutely. Through there. Those are some key things. But... I know you and me had talked before, and one of the things that I use, and Ron right. will, Ron and Denise will verify it, where you at here, is Echo Box 3. Yes. And as soon as I get here, where you at? Oh, there you are. For the people that don't know what Echo Box 3 is, that's what it is. Yeah. Okay, this device has six banks in it. It has phonetic sounds. It does not have any words. It cannot make a word. Denise tore, tore it apart and looked at it. Yeah. Had the permission of Danny and that created it and tore it apart. It cannot make a word. This has made sentences. This yep. has made words. This sold me when I first started on it, and I hadn't had Echo Box for a week. My papa came through. Oh, wow. How I know it was him. When I was little, we both had the same first name. I was named after him. Okay? So he didn't right. want Big Carl and Little Carl. He did not want that. So he gave me a special name, nickname, that only my family and close friends knew about. Okay. Okay. The night I was at the Kingston Cemetery, where he's buried at, I went down there. It's a cool December evening. Moon's out. I rolled the window down, shut the vehicle off right in front of his grave. I don't even get out of it. 
So I started asking questions. Well, I called him out by his real name, Carl Llewellyn. Nothing. And I went, well, you know what? I don't think I've ever told Papa his real name when he was alive. There you right? go. Yep. So I said, okay, Papa, are you here? And it came on there and said, hey, just like that, in a voice I hadn't heard in 20-some years. Wow. Okay. I said, do you know who this is? Okay. And five seconds later, I have it on digital recording on my other computer. I, I should have got it off. But it sits there and goes, butch. My, oh my nickname gosh. was Butch. How cool is that? Yeah, I took my that recording to my brother and sister, older brother and sister. I said, I got something for you guys to listen to. I played it. Both their mouths opened and hit the floor. Wow. They said, oh my God, that's Papa. And I said, yes. Yeah. And he stuttered the last year of his life when he had a major stroke. Oh my goodness. That's the only time I've ever heard anything come out there out of this thing stuttering. Yeah. So from then on, it sold me on this. There is something to it. The frequencies and the shuffling through it. And I mean, it's amazing. It's a fairly complicated program though, isn't it? Not really. Not okay. really. If Denise was back on here, she could tell you more about what's inside of it. All right. I know is the six banks there, and they all have phonetic sounds. It It's not even supposed to make the word Bob or Mom. We're yeah. back to back. They're the same way, right? Plus, okay, y'all see Echo Box. You come over, you can adjust it. Like what I do is you got six banks there. I take the first one to about all the way, then come back, go in between like this. I'll show you when I get it done. Okay. There is how mine is set up. I need to screenshot that. Well, I know you do. I don't know how to screenshot. I'm going to take a picture. At screenshot. I did. Okay. Because you and I were talking about that, that I was struggling with getting my settings right. Okay. The only other thing you do, and I'm going to tell you about Echo Box. Down here at the bottom of it, you have record and on and off. Hit right. off. Do not record on your phone. Yes, that's true. It's a joke. So the microphone, just leave it like it is. Then you slide that over. Then you slide that up. I leave all the settings like they are right there. Hang that's on. For, that is for your uh, uh, reverb. All those settings are that way. Okay. And I always hit start. Okay. So the reverb is already started. Then you got your other slider over here, which has your auto blend or your shuffle. Okay. The channel shuffle speed, I set it underneath where it says the word shuffle, the two F's and the L right in there somewhere. All right. Well, you're going to have to wait because now my flashlight tur turned on. <laughs> This has been a crazy energy week here. Could you pull that back just a tad towards you? I'm, okay, there we go. I was getting a um, a glare. Okay. Thank you. But anyway, and for those that I, don't know, Carl had told me that he was going to show me his settings and save them for me. Right. So and that's me why we're doing this. Do about, me and Ron usually do about the same settings. But anyway, once you get that set up, 
I always use the shuffle. And the reason I want the shuffle is look at the hour, look at the glass, the way it goes. Yeah. It never stops in the same place. I like that too. Okay. Shuffling. So what it's doing, it's shuffling between A, B, C, D, E, and F channels that we had already set up mm -hmm. at different times. And if nobody's ever heard it, I'm going to put it up by the phone. Okay. Are there spirits here with me right now? We talk. Yep. Can you tell me your name? Bernie? Bernie. Bernie. Is Bernie here? Question. Oh. Somebody said question. Yeah. Thank you. thank you. They said thank you back right before I shut it off. Yeah. But that's if you noticed you was get you had three different voices in there. Mm -hmm. That's because it's shuffling back through there. So I really, you know. I've had this app now for what seven years about that that's how old it is yeah oh it's a little older than that i think when i got it it was already two years old oh, okay it went from uh echo box 20 to echo mm -hmm. box 30 20 had yeah. four channels and uh some i don't other, even know which one i have on my phone now you probably got the 30 i may not have it on this phone but Always hook a speaker up and I mean put your tape recorder by it. Oh, I do when have we go it. out, we leave one running with a tape recorder by it. And, and mine is three. Yeah. Wherever it is. Yeah. Yep, zoom, zoom, it. zoom, zoom. Okay. Thank you. Well, how I got it and everything was how me and Gary, Pastor Gary, the paranormal pastor that you see in the chat room every once in a while. Yeah. How we got started in the paranormal was Gary was the uh, zoning commissioner for Caldwell County, Missouri. Okay. The courthouse down there was built to be in the third courthouse. The other two burnt down. Was built in 1898. Right. And it's still in use today. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So, a group out of Kansas City, Dust to Dawn, Jimmy McVeigh, right? Oh, I know that person. I know that name. Yep. He's He passed away here a couple years ago and stuff. But anyway, they called the county commissioners and wanted to know if they could come up and investigate the courthouse. Well, the commissioners got with Gary and said, we got a group that does paranormal investigations or something, but we got to have somebody that works for the courthouse be with them because they're going to have total access to the courthouse. Mm -hmm. Right. So Gary asked me at the church, right. He says, man, I got a group coming up in Kansas city doing paranormal investigations. Would you like to come down there with me? And I went, Oh yeah, I'd love to <laughs> this is before I got into the paranormal. I'd yeah. seen all this crap on TV going, yeah, right. Uh-huh. Yeah, right. So we got down there and stuff, met Jimmy and the whole group from them. We had first investigation at the courthouse, and it got crazy. I mean crazy. Because me and Jimmy was upstairs in the jury room offside of the courtroom setting up their TV so they could put their DVR and all this stuff in, right? Right. The door to the room is three-fourths of the way open where, where I'm standing and Jimmy's standing, you can see both doorknobs, right? We're talking. I'm asking questions about all this stuff because I'm interested, right? Right. And for some reason, I looked over at the door and he did too. 
And I turned back and he goes, did you see? And I said, doorknob. The doorknobs were turning. Wow. One of his people that could see spirits comes in right after this, two minutes after this, and goes, you know, there's a spirit sitting in the jury chair out here, don't you? <laughs> I went, okay, cool. But we did all this. Had a good night that night. Great investigation. They came up and showed right. us the evidence. They came up two more times, right? At different times. So me and Gary would go every time. The third time we was up there, Jimmy pulls me off to the side and goes, you know, you and Gary need to start your own paranormal team and do this courthouse. It's a long drive to get everybody up here from Kansas City up to Kansas yeah. City, right? And stuff. And I said, yeah. He goes, if you need anything, you just let me know. So I talked to Gary and everything. So I said, okay, we'll create the CC Paranormal Team, which is Caldwell County Paranormal Team. And we did the courthouse for a year. Right? Really? And everything. Go in, investigate it and stuff. We even brought some people in. Denise and Ron came in. I mean, it, it, it was good. Well, some lady during the daytime fell down the stairs where the jury room's up, or the court the courtroom's upstairs on the second floor. Mm -hmm. She fell down the stairs and broke her arm and her leg. Oh, so the, mercy. Uh, the commissioners go, well, because of insurance reasons, we can't have you guys in here anymore. Yeah. And I went, oh, okay. Right. But see, on the backside of the courthouse in a separate building is the old jail. Ah, okay. I see we where you're going here. Both of them. Yeah. Right? Well, the jail has a history with me. When I was little, it's one of those jails that the jail and the house are built together. Mm -hmm. People lived in the house, cooked for the prisoners and everything. Right. Well, when I was three and four years old, Mr. and Mrs. Finley, that were the caretakers for the jail, used to babysit me. Oh, I, I bet can you remember, were precious. I can remember Shirley, her name, saying, you want to go get the prisoners? Here's the key. She would give me the big, long key, and I'd go in there, open the door, and say, it's supper time, and be good. <laughs> <laughs> they would come out. They would come out and sit at the table with us and eat. Then they'd go back in and be locked up. You tell the prisoners to be good? Uh-huh. I was three years old. You were too cute. I love it. Okay. Oh, yeah. But I said that when we went in to investigate it, I went, oh, man, I remember these cells. I've been in here and played in here. Yeah. You know, when I was little. But, uh, yeah, all that got stopped. But me and Gary kept going on so i give all thanks to jimmy mcveigh and dust to dawn for helping us get started well and i think that's pretty cool too then through the blinkings i don't know how i ever found denise's radio show on the very first network she was on yeah i don't know jimmy, i don't yeah i don't know if jimmy told me about it or what so i found her on there Mm -hmm. And I would listen to it every Monday night, right? And you can ask Denise. My favorite question was, what kind of equipment do they use? What Always. kind of equipment do they use? What kind? Every, every week. Yes. And she would sit there. Yeah, Carl's asking his question again. He's always in here asking that question. Appreciate yes. it. Yes. Well, that was in like... January or something like that, that I started listening to her show. Well, in April that year, she had me and Gary on as a guest. Mm -hmm. Right? I listened to that show. And then turned around a couple months later and had us on again. And then in August of that year at the Kansas City's very first Paracon yep. down there, is where I met Denise and Ron Pridemore. Yeah. And we've been friends ever since. 
you They're know, good people. done a lot. I was, uh, I assisted him as a tour guide at the Sally house for a year. Yeah. Up there and driving. But me and Gary's done a lot. We've been to Melbourne Manor four times. That is someplace I have not been. I have read about it. I've interviewed him. I, everything about that place fascinates me. What was your favorite part about Malvern? The attic and coming down out of the attic, that little short part of the hallway right there where you go to what we call the rape rooms. Right? Where the guy supposedly okay. raped the younger kid that was across the hall. Okay. We've gotten a lot of EVPs in there, but a lot of the stuff upstairs. One of the coolest things I seen upstairs was we's up there with a whole group of people. Denise had all set it up and everything. We was there. We was up in the attic. So I had the SLS, but I had the Xbox One SLS hooked up. Right. Which shows six stick figures. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was cold. Oh, man, it was cold that day. We're upstairs. I got the computer. The Xbox set on a table and a chair facing the backside of the attic. Everybody's standing there. And one of the ladies in there, you could see all their stick figures. Right. Right. Said, my hands are cold. And as soon as she said that, this little bitty short, two foot, three foot tall stick figure appeared. And you seen both hands go up around her hand on that stick figure. And okay. she's not even looking at my computer. I have my computer facing me. Mm -hmm. Right. And she goes, my hands getting warmer. Hands getting warmer. I turned the computer around so they could all see the other stick figure that was there. Because there was only five people there, but there were six stick figures. Wow. That's excellent. Yeah. That's excellent. It's like that. It's stuff like that that uh, interests me that I yes. can't explain. You know. Just like on the regular SLS. Anybody out there that's got one, I got a good question for you. Excuse me, my nose. I've been outside in the cold weather today. That'll do it. Yeah. But anybody that's got an SLS camera out there that has the Xbox 360 SLS, mm -hmm. it can only do two stick figures. Is what I've always been told. I'm now getting three on it. Really? Yeah. Gary's well, got a good picture and I don't have it with me and stuff. I'll have to get it and show it to you sometime. I'd love that. There's this, it's out at the cemetery. There's a stick figure in the grass. There's one beside the headstone, not on the headstone, beside the headstone. Okay. And then there's one up in the tree limb above it. Oh, my gosh. They go high because Lori Dorsey is in chat or she was in chat. She let us know she's listening. Lori uh -huh. is really good with her, <clears throat> excuse me, with her SLS. And I'm curious as to how many she has gotten. So Lori, if you are, she said, uh, she said she's gotten four. Now that is that on the, like I said, the Xbox 360, the very first type of LS, S, that SLS. She'll, she'll put that in there too. If she knows. Right. Because but, I knew, um, I know they do have a newer version and it's right. a XLS version. So, but, but yeah, I mean, I love debunking the SLS. You yeah. know, usually if it comes on a headstone, I can say it's the headstone causing it. But when it's on the ground in the grass in front of it. 
Exactly. Well, That's a little hard. All right. Well, we have a couple of questions. Are you up okay. for them? Let's see. Um, we're talking when we were talking about all of the ramping up and stuff. Right. They were talking about electrical storms and yes, we need to know our limits. And Joanne Stewart said, hi, Carl, from little old yep. me in Canada. Yep. And then um, Anthony had a question. Special uh, question is, oh, come now. Any spirit box apps on cell, you know, real or fake? I think that we came to the conclusion Echo Vox is real. Right. And now your ghost. This one here, and I'm going to show you one since he brought okay. up that question. Sure. Oh, where are you at now? I got that. Oh, let's see. I got to look. Are you going to pull up Ghost Radar to show the one that's not? No, I'm going to show you the new Ghost XLS. Okay. If I can bring it up here, I got to find it first. Where are you at? Lori and I downloaded that when we were in Arkansas. We had gone to the um, Eureka Springs UFO conference. Uh huh. And we were playing with that one day and we were not that impressed with it, but it was just kind of an odd thing. Oh, Lori's talking about the Scottish Paranormal app, which is also excellent. Yeah. I looked that app up. Okay. What do you think? I okay. Like, okay. If I can get my light. Anyway, this is the Ghost SLS. You see okay. it doing a stick figure? I do. Let's see if I can get it back here. Now, when I turn it around here, It don't have stick figures of us on there, but yet I do it at a TV and it'll show the stick figures of the people. Really? Yeah. Now what's cool is there is a stick figure in front of my computer that keeps popping in and out. But this is called the ghost tube SLS. Lori? Now, what I'm trying to figure out is, we all know, and Lori knows too, the Xbox SLS puts out millions of little yeah. dots, infrared dots. Yeah. My cell phone don't put out millions of little infrared dots. Not even close. So, but, I mean, yeah, it'll, I can go over there and you're going to make a liar out of me now, aren't you? Uh -huh. But what you can do all kinds of stuff to it. It's one. It's This is one of those that's fake. Uh -huh. This is to have fun with and scare kids and show kids. Yeah. And different, that's, what, right? that's what we determined also. Yeah. Anything that the ghost tube or the ghost app like that, if it's named ghost. Yes. People made it. To give it away free so people could have fun with it. Yes. all they did. Now, Echovox and Necrophonics so far are the two that I would promote and use. Scottish Paranormal, I've checked it out and everything. I'm going to get it and try it out. This is about the SLS, the Ghost SLS. Right. Yeah, with shiny surfaces. You're exactly yeah. right. You're exactly right. But because I mean, the reflection has heat too. Right. But because I don't have a gift and I'm not a medium and, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah, I listen to Echo Box. Yeah. Hi, April. And April will tell hey, you, April. Echo Box has done a lot for people. Mm -hmm. When I first started the Paranormal Nation radio show before De Denise and Ron started with me, right? Right. I would use my dowsing rods in the echo box for two hours on here. Really? Okay. I have a friend, Jade, that lives in Denver. 
her brother went missing. They couldn't oh. find him. Right? She started telling me about it in the chat room. Had the echo box going on. And stuff. And the dowsing rods. I, The echo box, we would play it and ask questions. And if my echo box said yes, we'd see if the dowsing rod said yes at the same time. Right? Does not have. Okay, good. That's good to know. It don't have a word bank. I like that. But anyway, we started. I had her put questions in the comments that I could ask the echo box with. Before okay. I could ask them, the echo box started answering her question in the chat room. And it told her to go to truck location is what it said. Truck location. Go right. She didn't think nothing about it. We talked. They went up two days later with a group of people where his truck was located when they found his truck. And they went down the path to where it splits off. He had always went to the left and went that route in his hikes. Right? The echo box, she remembered, said right. Yeah. She went right, went down 100 yards and found his remains off the side down there. Oh. Uh, so she I contacted that that was me. the outcome. She contacted me and told me that. And I went, that's really amazing. Yeah. This, I don't know who was telling her. But somebody on here was telling her. And I'll have to go back and find that show on the Bill of Rights Network and play it sometime. I would love because it. I would it love would. it if you would just share it with me because I think that's, I think that matters. And did she recognize, did the voice sound like her brother? No. She said she didn't recognize the voice. So maybe it was one of, everybody one of his there. Papers. What she told me was everybody, when they got there and they're walking down the path and she started to go right. And they went, no, he never goes down that way. And she said, I was told to go to the right. So yeah. her and five of the other 10 that were there, five of them went the regular way and five of them went with her and they walked down there and she spotted his jacket. 20 feet down off a cliff, it fell. Bless his heart. And stuff. He was a firefighter, first responder veteran all this and that same thing she is and uh i'll tell you she got on the next week she had sent me mess messages and got on there with me and told me all that sent me pictures of his memorial to where they could lay him to rest and everything but yeah. she told everybody a spirit told me through a device on a cell phone they thought she was crazy yeah. Until they went back and watched the show. Yeah. So it's stuff like that. I mean, we can't say it's true. We can't say it's fake, but it led somebody to find somebody. Led to answers. Yes. And led, led to, to being able to let a spirit be at peace. Right. But yeah, stuff like that. But yeah, these, these apps, there's a lot of them out there. And everything. Uh, there's some that are good, and there's some that are fake. They're just for fun. Yep. You know. Whether, I'm with you though. If it says ghost, it's a toy. We'll put it this way. Yeah. Yeah. April only uses Echo Box. She's one of our <laughs> Echo Box users. That's Denise's cousin. But. Uh, yeah, you can remember when I first bought Echo Box, it was $30. Yeah, I paid it. that for it. I paid that for it. Yeah. Now, now it's on sale for $19. <laughs> well, I'm not paying him again. <laughs> but then it's supposed to be coming out with a new version of it, too. Yeah. 
So, well, yeah. you know, I have, when I started investigating and going places to do that, where I wanted to be able to have the tools to gather the information that I thought I'd be able to get uh -huh. because I could know something, but I wanted documentation. And it's, it's really funny because um, my gifts, there are different things that if somebody, if somebody asks me for something, then I have to answer it. I can't not do it. Right. But I always figure that's because they're, they're, I've had people that didn't know me ask me to give them a reading. And I'm like, why would you think I could give you a reading? I mean, you know, I do I have like mystic written across you know, my there's, forehead. There's a lot of know. people out there's a lot of people out there. If you say you're into the paranormal or you're a paranormal investigator. Yeah. Oh, can you give me a reading? No, I don't do that. That's not my, well, That's, the thing is. I don't is have that, that ability. Well, how are you a paranormal investigator? That's just like tools. Pastor Gary. We get it tools. all the time. Yeah. You're a pastor. How can you hunt ghosts? Not hunting ghosts. I'm finding spirits that need peace. Exactly. All I tell yeah. them is, you believe in the Bible? You read your Bible? Well, yes. I said, does There's it mention ghosts, spirits? supernatural in it yeah okay you just answered your own questions yeah yeah it's amazing though it really is how many people believe well you go to church and you're a pastor and you're all this and that you believe in ghosts well, yeah. yeah one of the most best ghosts there is is jesus christ yeah you know he died he rose he appeared and then he ascended. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like the UFO question. You know, there are numerous instances through the Bible that involve that. Ezekiel mm -hmm. left in a flaming chariot. I mean, hello, <laughs> you know, and it's fun. So, you know, it's just really wild and um april i did not know april says she's never done an official investigation no she, she has not happened she hasn't but i thought that she had no april, we've i been would trying to, to hook her up we've been trying to hook her up to some people up there in the north where she lives at yes and stuff to get her out to do an investigation well the problem stuff. is is that it's addictive because once you know, we had an experience in Scotland um, that was really extraordinary. And I'm not going to tell about it because it's Rick's experience. And he's going to be talking with Denise tomorrow and um, Monday, Denise Monday. And then I'll have him on Wednesday. But the experience that we had was um, intense and crazy and just bizarre but it was such a definite reaction anybody who was in that room knew except for rick knew what it was why it was what was happening and you know when a spirit wants to get through to you you are going to be gotten through to because this was um it was unbelievable. And as Mikey said, bro, my REM pad don't do that. REM pod don't do that. You know, because it was like crazy. And um, when a spirit wants you and wants your attention, it's going to get it. Uh -huh. And whether you believe in them or not, you don't have to because they don't care. No. If, if they're reaching out to you, you're going to get the message. And it's not because they're mean and assertive and, you know, they, they can be very assertive, but I've not really had anybody be nasty to me. Um, I've been called 
words a lot and they usually start with B, but um, I figured that that is usually going to be a male who is, in, because when I'm, when I'm doing an investigation, I'm not ugly, but I'm assertive. You know, I'm like, I'm not here for my health when people call me names. Yeah. I'm not here for my health. I'm here because I want to let people know that you're here. If you need anything, you know, let us know. I mean, and, yeah, I've heard that word come out of a lot of spirit boxes and everything and even yeah. the echo box. Yeah. But one of the worst I've ever heard me and Rody Speaks was at the Sally house with Denise and Ron and Katrina and all them, right? Mm -hmm. At three o'clock in the morning, we were in the basement, me and her were doing talking. And the Echo Vox said this one word four times. It starts with a C and I'll leave it at that. Gotcha. And I'm sitting there going, did that? And Rody goes, did that just say? And I said, I believe it did. And as soon as I said that, it said it again. Oh, my word. And well, that's not going to be on any airwaves anywhere. No, no, I didn't. I had it recorded, but I, I've never shown it. Just right. for well, that simple reason and yes. everything. I was like, man, you know, I've heard some crazy stuff come out of things. But that to come out of there, you know, mm -hmm. that word's not in any of the devices that create words. Nope. So, yeah, that's that's one of the weirdest things I've ever heard come out of it. I don't think I've ever heard that, but, I mean, they can be profane. They can. And it's not always that they're just trying to be mean, either. It's no. just they're Hi, Tom. Hey, Tom McNicholas. But um, it's so much fun to, when I go places and I get that right off the bat, I'm like, oh, did I intimidate you? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I am here. I am going to show that you're here and knock it off. I'm a nice person, dang it. <laughs> You know, and sometimes if they're really being obnoxious, Lori will tell you, I just get my dander up sometimes, but I'm just like, why? Yes. Yes, I am. Thank you for recognizing that, <laughs> you know, right? it's just like, or, you know, I'm not a that I'm the that. So go well, with that like where you want to. So Listening and doing things and everything. And like Denise will tell you. One of the weirdest things that's happened with Denise and us, mm -hmm. we had an investigation in Polo, Missouri, in a building that was a fireworks stand. But before the fireworks, yeah, <laughs> before it was a fireworks stand, it was a funeral store, mm -hmm. uh, a hardware store a funeral home and then way back in the 20s it had a theater upstairs in it okay. that you got through from the outside okay now people had been there some of them famous baseball players professional baseball players back in those time frames had been there their signatures were on the back walls well, on the way up there, Denise and Ron come up I-35 and come across 116 and out by uh, Prairie Ridge. There's a cemetery on the side of the road. As Ron's driving, Denise looks over the cemetery and sees a spirit standing by this headstone waving at her. <laughs> she goes, she's never seen something like that before. Right. Right. Well, she noticed the name on the headstone. So she gets in town. She tells me about it. Of course, there was no internet in that building. We had to go down to Casey's a half a block away to pick up internet signal. Right. And everything. She looked this name up out there at the Prairie Ridge Cemetery. 
got his name, look him up, right? He was, uh, his funeral was in that building at the funeral home. Oh. Right? Right. We had all that going on. We had quite a bit of evidence. Now get this. We all left there. We was talking to the owner about helping him and going to set up some tours to go through there. Mm -hmm. The next week, high winds came through. It knocked the building down. Oh, my gosh. You could see oh it on the gosh. news on uh, Fox 4 or KCTV 5, Kansas City News. The whole second floor collapsed where you could see the stage up there. Oh, my gosh. And I was like, we was just in there a week ago. Ooh. Wasn't your time, man. Yeah, wasn't our time. <laughs> I sent that picture to Denise and she said, oh, my. And I said, yeah. Yeah. I mean, actually, you could see the stage in a chair that I had placed up there. I was sitting in. In front of the stage, a folding oh, chair my was word. still up oh, there. My word. Yeah. That was bad. And they finally bulldozed the whole building down. And oh, it was it was sad. It was a neat building. It even had part building. of the embalming equipment on the second floor behind the stage. That had been used for embalming? Yes. Not used wow. That's and uh, they unusual. had boxes up there that caskets used to come in. No way. Yeah. So all oh that my stuff, gosh. I told the guy whenever we was there investigating, I said, man, you got a fortune setting up here in antiques. These this Not weird anymore. stuff like this, I could tell <laughs> wow. you some people who would buy it. Yeah. He goes, Well, we're not ready to sell it yet. Well, you should have sold it. That day. Now it's now it's in a landfill somewhere buried. Yeah. Wow. But to have that guy standing at the cemetery five miles away, yeah. waving at Denise in front of his headstone. And then she looks it up and finds out he's affiliated with that building that she's going to investigate that night. Yeah. Well, you that know, is really in, I mean, something else. It is something else. But, you know, a lot of times, and I'm sure that's not the only time Denise has had this happen, but they will reach out before. It's like they know before you come. They'll reach out and, to her and yeah. talk to her. But yeah. show their self. She said that's the first time. That's wild. It is. Of course, Denise is so gifted. A lot of times everything that she gets is wild. Oh it's, yeah, um, it's interesting that way. She so she's gifted that. Uh, they came up to the courthouse to investigate it, and we was going out to our cemetery, the Cox Cemetery. Mm -hmm. So we all met in Kingston at the courthouse. Okay. Well, we're parked over by the sheriff's office, and I know the sheriff real well, and everything. Gary did too. So we're out there talking to him when Denise and Ron pull up, and we introduce them to him and Denise looks at me and goes I got something to tell you I said you do yeah from your mom my mom passed several years ago and I said well tell me I said Gary knew my mom uh, Jerry the sheriff knew my mom she told me to tell you she likes everything you're doing everything's going well and stuff just Told me a bunch of stuff like that. So she goes, but I'm confused. I said, what's that? She goes, she kept saying June. And your mom's name is Lois, right? And I said, yes. And when Nate, when she said June, the sheriff's mouth dropped open. Gary's mouth dropped open. She goes, I don't know if it means the month. Uh, time she was born, dead, what? I said, no. Her name is Lois June. Okay. And everybody wow. called her June. That's so wild. Jerry goes, oh, man, that's that's way wild. 
So Jerry goes, yeah, you guys go out to Cox Cemetery because none of us, the Sheriff's Department, don't go out there. They have seen the soldiers on horseback. Really? Yes. You go out, you go to Kingston and tell the Sheriff's Department you're going to the Cox Cemetery. They say that's fine. If anything happens out there, we'll be out there at daylight. Because every yeah. one of them have been out there at night and seen the riders on horses and they've seen the wagons come through there. That's bizarre. You know, the only other place that I've heard, and I know it happens in a lot of places, right? But the Chickamauga battlefield outside of Chattanooga, I have had more than one person because, you know, it's a going through there as a highway, right? Or a road mm -hmm. to get, you can go home that way if you live in the right, anyway. Um, I've had two people tell me that driving through Chickamauga Battlefield on their way home at night, they had to stop because there was a battalion crossing the road of Union soldiers. Mm -hmm. A, it shouldn't have been Union soldiers unless it was the end of the war, right? Right. But um, but both times it was Union soldiers. Both people saw that. So it's really weird how, I mean, I get stone tape theory. I, I do, but it's almost like they're stuck in a D loop. You know, mm -hmm. they're, I don't know why they're still marching to war. I right. don't think that's what I would want to do. I think that if I were coming back, I would want to go to a time before that. Or if I were victorious the time after that, I wouldn't want to be going into getting ready to have to fight again. Well, there it goes. Do they even know they're dead? They don't. So they keep going, trying to go through it and through it. They relive it every time. But I don't understand why they don't try to find some place that I'm sure there's a lot of energy because there's there there's fear and there's resolve i mean because you you're in the army it takes a special person to know that you are possibly going into your death and still go yeah. do it right okay that is that is why you will never ever hear me be anything less than thankful and so full of love for any person that served in our military because contrary to what a bunch of people think those are people that make a decision to put their, just like police officers, you know, they make a decision every morning when they get up that they're going to go and they're going to put that uniform on and they're going to take care of business. And yes, there are idiots out there that don't value them and will try to kill them. Right. They, they and know there's a great chance that they may yeah. make, not make it home that night. Every day. Yeah. Every Policemen, time. They put this, this first on. responders. Yes. Any of that. Yes. You know, and you're talking about that, standing up for the veterans is great. You heard about the lady in San Francisco. Yeah. That I had that on our show last night. Did you? That, oh, I was. Uh, yeah. I showed the YouTube video and everything. I was totally peeled to yeah. put it bluntly. The shirt had nothing. To be ashamed of on it. Yeah. Right? But yet yeah. to make her get off the plane. And the only way she'd get on the plane was to take that shirt off. She told him she didn't have a bra on. You know. She told this steward that she was a Marine veteran. And going to see a Marine sister. That was a veteran with her. Right? Right. And he comes out and says, I don't care about your service and I don't care about hers. You cannot get on this plane with that shirt on. Well, that's going to that be a part me bad. Yeah. But so tell people, tell people more because they don't know. Yeah. I mean, the shirt 
all it said was something about don't follow within the war within yeah and su veteran suicide yeah and the guy said it was offensive what was offensive about it nothing i'm waiting to see what delta airlines is going to do about this situation well they'll probably send the steward to you know sensitivity training and then give them a bonus because they had to be under such stress and then there'll be no apology issue because it probably said the enemy within because which was a recent quote from the you know the main yeah. orange man yeah. so you know but that's what i don't understand and that's one of the things that when we started the show we were talking about is that this is a person who has seen firsthand lost comrades because of not being able to live with what they saw right. or with what maybe they had to do or you know you just don't know and if somebody feels strongly enough to wear a shirt about suicide then leave them the hell alone right that is something that is to me that is something that is sacrosanct you don't mess with somebody that's suffering and you know there wasn't anything negative about that shirt nope and but that woman will probably retire comfortably now. Yeah, it's if there's a God in heaven. I figure she's already got an attorney. Well, if she doesn't, then I'm sure they're lining up. Well, the worst so, part about it was, like I said, they walked her off the plane and you're in that little catwalk area between the airport and the plane. Yeah. He stopped her and told her why, you know, he didn't care about that shirt. It was offensive and all this and that. If she wanted back on the plane, she had to take that shirt off and put another one on. And she told him, I don't have a bra. Yeah. He says, well, you're not getting back on the plane. So she turned around, him standing behind her, mind you, took her shirt off and grabbed a uh, sweatshirt hoodie to put over. Right? Put her shirt back in her bag. He says, okay, you can get back on the plane. She paid for a seat with extra leg room. She went to sit in it and he says, no, you have to go to the back of the plane. That I did not know. Yes. It's in her on the YouTube uh, information interview with her and stuff. Now, because of all this, it delayed that flight. She missed her reconnecting flight because of him. Hmm. Yeah, there's a lot to the story. And this isn't the first time with that cert with Delta. Yes. Earlier this year, there was another lady that was done the same way. Well, I will keep that in mind when I'm booking flights in the future. Yeah. Don't fly Delta. Because there's uh there's other airlines that give points on cards. Yeah. So but you but know I didn't Delta, mean to get political or anything like that. But well that's not really veteran, political. The veteran that's community unique. is really upset over this one. Well they should be. Yes. You know actually they should not be because it should not have happened. Yeah, they shouldn't, but because but, it did happen. Yes. And not only the veteran community, the women's community ought to be in an uproar. Yeah. That would be like me telling you, you can't wear that. You have to take it off. Well, I don't have them wrong. I don't care. You got to switch shirts. Yeah. And then stand there while I did it. I don't yeah, think right so. Behind you. I don't think so. No. I would. I would have made sure that you were bent over or rolling on the floor while I changed. Right. Or I would have made sure you turn around, face the other direction. Yep. I'll turn around this way. But no, he stood there watching her. 
He's probably getting his rocks off. Probably. Oh, I did not just say that. <laughs> All right. Well, but it's true. I mean, because true. why else? Why else would he have done that? Exactly. In all honesty, that's just crazy. Oh, it's, and, uh, it's and you bad. know, it's really bad because the fact that he took her seat away from her, mm -hmm. you know, that is that is somebody who is obviously on a power trip because they can do that. And since he made her do the one thing the first time, then he could make her do the second thing the second time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't understand. That's just part of that inhumanity kind of thing. He was demonizing her to make himself feel better, probably because he couldn't pass the physical to be in the military. Right. And so that's why he was reacting in that way. I mean, you know, and I know that, that, you know, we have a friend, Santiago, whose life work is bringing attention to veteran suicide because he's walked those shoes. You know, he's, he's gone down that path of losing friends to it. And veteran suicide is such a very serious thing. And it's such a very this time of year. Yes. And it's going to just be getting, getting worse the closer you get to the holidays. And, yep. you know, we never know what triggers that. We don't. Why some people cope with things that seem impossible to deal with. And while other people, other people succumb to what may not seem to be that big a deal. And yet it is in their heart. And it's not always mental illness that creates that scenario. Mm -mm. Sometimes it's damage. And I know that I need to call Santi and get him on because it well, really you think is. I blew up? You should have seen the day before when it all came out about the story. Yeah. Oh, Santiago on his podcast. Oh, yes. you talking about a mad Puerto Rican? And he can be sassy. Oh, he yes. Can, he can be very opinionated and sassy. And because that's something that matters. To, everybody oh. has to remember. He, he's a paralegal. Yeah. And he worked for one of the largest lawyers out there in Nashville. Yeah. And made him a lot of money. All he's got to do is call him up and say, hey, here's your case. Take care Take of this homegirl. And run with it. Yeah. It deals with a veteran. Oh, don't you don't you know that there are lawyers salivating at getting that, that case? And yep. you know what's really bad? What's really bad is on the way to a funeral. You know, I mean. And that's part of the problem, I think, you know, when we first started talking about all of the angst and the anger and the ugliness and the pettiness and the, the hurt and the damage that we're seeing. You know, there's so much of it that comes from so many different directions right now. And, you know, it's not just the political climate. It is that you know, humanity as a whole is suffering right now. Yes. And it's, why do you think, what do you think the primary reason is for that? Humanity suffering because you look at all these leaders in all the countries, including mm -hmm. the United States, mm -hmm. especially our country, and everything we used to be the number one country in the world we had we can make deals and make other countries obey what yeah. needed to go on yes right now i'd rate as number five if we're lucky if we're lucky i don't believe if we're, there. we're lucky 
the other countries, and I've heard this from, I've heard it from the, the Ukraine people, for example, over there. Danny was over there walking and talking to a lot of people over there. Yes. They're watching our election real close. Yep. They do not like Biden. They do not. Well, they don't like a weak America because of a, a weak America makes a danger to the world. It does. And if America falls, the rest of the world is going to fall. Yeah. It's just that simple, folks. I mean, there's a reason that Reagan called us that shining light on the hill. Mm -hmm. And we have for so long, I mean, I think that we quit teaching our history in schools because, you know, we didn't want to be elitist mm -hmm. or whatever, but America is special. We are a brilliant experiment that nobody really thought could last. And we have, but from Marx all the way down, people have always said, yeah, if America comes down, it will be from within. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing to ourselves. That's that's exactly what is going on. And, you know, so growing, now up, our allies. growing up, you and me and a bunch of other people in our age group, we've seen a lot of presidents. We have tons of all, them. Right. Yeah. We've seen Democrats and Republicans argue and fight. Yeah, but nothing like we've seen in the last five, six years. Well, it's just I think it's just become a golden opportunity for people that don't care for this country to just jump in the fray. Right. And mm -hmm. it's totally OK to say whatever you want to about someone, whether it's true or not. That used to be libel. And it was act and it still is actionable, just nobody does that. And you know, because you can't find anyone to take those cases or you can't for whatever reason. Right. And you know, you not got, interrupting you but hi to Jeremy. And hey Jeremy video, York. Jeremy, the video you made was so awesome. I yes. appreciate that showing yes. all my network and all the shows and everything. I really appreciate that. Yes. And I appreciate and being part of the Things Network. Wide open. In fact, I'm going out tomorrow to do some investigating with some of my new equipment that I, I actually have to show for the, I had it for our show. But um, I'm going to just pop it up there right quick. So yeah. this is from um, Bob Chris, Chris made this. That's my new little geophone, and obviously I can't be still. However, it's really a because I like visual things that I can get video of. And then this is so cute because Bob Christopher, he got so mad because I said, Oh, I want the Mickey Mouse thing. He's like, I don't have a Mickey Mouse thing. Yeah. It looks kind of like a Mickey Mouse, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. But it's a little, you know. Rimpod. It helps if you turn it on. Oh, I must have killed the battery. Yeah. It was working this afternoon. But anyway. But it is this little REM pod. And I'm going to have to figure out how to open it and get my battery out. But it does... It's a great little rim pod. I actually have a dog too that he made. There's a lot of people out making a lot of equipment nowadays. Well, this is that. Um, ah, I am such a bad friend because I can't come up with the name. Mm. Para. And he does not have a sticker on the bottom of either one of these. Ah, Bob Christopher, I will put this on my Facebook page. <laughs> I love you, Bob. Don't, don't, don't beat me. Okay. But um, he doesn't care. 
as long as I use it, he doesn't care. But this is so frustrating. I cannot figure out how to open this. My other one slides. But one, I'm waiting like to really see sometime. I don't know if I'll ever be able to or it ever be available to the oh. public. You had them on your show. Which one? The one that did the white noise. Oh. Yes. What what is that called? White white static or oh, what? No, it's staticom. staticom. It was it was Tony. Yeah. And um I'm gonna tell you, um EVP, Tony Rathman is his name. Staticom is the coolest thing ever. I heard it being used in, in a practical application. And it was so cool because, you know, he runs a program on his computer. Ron, you know, Yakavati runs one on his computer. They are completely different. And yet, you can hear them. You can hear the voices. Tony Rathman got involved in doing his show and stuff because I had a paranormal evidence contest on my show one year. And so I had different people submit their evidence. I should do this again because it was a lot of fun. Okay. And because I owned my network, I gave him a show. You know, whoever won would get to be, you know, would get, free airtime to be able to in production to be able to do a show. And so Tony Rathman was hands down and there was some good evidence, but Tony Rathman's EVPs are astounding. And that was without Staticom. Okay. Yeah. But with that Staticom, and, man, that yes. was the way he showed it that night yes. and everything. That was totally awesome. It is. And and for people that don't know, it's white noise. Yeah. But he takes, when he's going through it, he takes the white noise out of it. Yes. And the words come out. Yes. That's the best way I can describe it. Well, if you want to find out, and I'm so glad you brought this up. Um, Tony does a, a show on the UNX network. And it's Paranormal Voices, I think. Uh -huh. I think that is it, but um, and I or entity voices, but he is fantastic and it's Staticom S T A T I C O M. It is all the rage right now. People are talking about it like nobody's business. It's unheard of. It's unprecedented and it's cool. And just like Tony and Ron and Lourdes and Sheree. It's just brilliant. They and, have taken it to the next level. And they're the only people they're doing it. Closer. They're the only people doing it. Yeah. It's a they're proprietary software. Information. Yeah. It's their own software. Yeah. And Entity you know, Voices. That's the name of it. Entity Voices. Thank Brain you. Put it in there. So, you know, it's really I'm glad you brought that up because that's one of Tony's equipment his his evp work is so bizarre it's so good it's bizarre and i mean there was nobody nobody else that was even close to his evidence and so i'm really fortunate to count him as a friend and this is a meeting person you know i had your neck real friend he right. and, and his bride and um Sherry is really a very special person too. And his son Dylan is just as cool as they are. So, you know, it's really, it was really a blessing to get to meet them and then to see his success and his effort and how he's built his knowledge base to be able to do all of this. It's cool. And I love to see people succeed. I'll, I'd always try to promote people 
doing new stuff. Right. And, and him, I give him a lot of credit and the team he's with that's developed this, mm -hmm. gone through it. But to sit there and to show everybody how it works. And yeah. like he said, it's doubtful it'll ever be available to the public. Yeah. Because of everything that's involved with it with certain microphones and everything like that. For him to sit there and show us, I mean, I was yeah. producing the show. I was intrigued behind the scenes watching yeah. that. Stuff. Well, I talked to him after the show quite a bit to find out some more information about it. But yeah, that's the next step, which we've all known white noise, just like yeah. you had talked about on the show, having yes. the baby monitors. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, the baby monitors. Yeah, you know, the the white noise machines. Yeah. I can't have that going. Like when I would because I have one at my house that I would use for my grandchildren because they slept with one at home. And if I lay down with them just to you know snuggle or whatever and the machine is already on, I can't listen. <laughs> <laughs> I have to I have to turn it off because I hear the voices. Right. And the kids, the kids don't know, right? But I, I, I just don't, because I know there's people at my house. <laughs> okay, right. I, I, I do know, and I mean, we have too much of all of our grandmothers and mothers, and you know, all the stuff. But um, that white noise machine is why I've been in the process of cleaning out all of the stuff that belonged to mother-in-laws and moms and grandmas and stuff because I I don't need it keeping the energy there. They need to be able to be knowing that their stuff is being used by somebody that will use it. So and I need my garage back. So it's all yeah. it's all good. It's all you know I can understand that. But yeah. But, but but you it know, is a white noise there. Yeah. You know, it's been in the paranormal society a long, time. For a long time. But to be able to break it down and take the white noise out. Yeah. I mean, and have what's behind it. That's, isn't it fun? That is amazing. Yeah. It really is. But I mean, yeah, I've learned a lot from a lot of your guests on your network since I started producing the show. Thank you. Stuff, man. Well, they've really learned a lot from you. But appreciate them. You know, even after the show, we talk and everything. I finally got to talk and meet with Rick McCollum. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. and now you get, get to, to see him on Denise's show and talk to him some more. Yeah, you're going to yeah, get him. You're going to get him twice him next week. Find him, get him on your show. Yeah. Because he asked me that night, why haven't I been on your show? Yeah. I didn't know yet. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you know, when he wrote a book, he wrote the paranormal book of the year. He does all right. You know, yeah. when he makes up his mind to do something, he, he does well, it well. He got me when he was talking on there to you and everything that, you know, being a stunt man and stuff. And his first job was with Lone Wolf McQuaid. Yeah. I went, I watched that movie five, six times. I got to go back. And yeah. while you was doing that, I looked up Rick McCollum and sure enough, it was there. Lone yeah. Wolf McQuaid. And I went, oh, I went to watch the movie on Netflix. Lone Wolf yeah. McQuaid. It wouldn't let me watch it. It kept oh saying gosh. error. Error. And I'm going, oh, this is fine. I really want to see. I know the scene he's in. He told me. Yeah, now I can't even watch it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find it somehow. Jeremy has him on in a few weeks, too. He had told me oh, that you're he gonna love with it, you. Jeremy. You're going to yeah. love it. He's yeah. a great guy. He really is. They know each other. They know each other. Jeremy is who nominated him for Book of the Year. Uh oh, awesome. So Jeremy nominated his book. So Hi, April. Hey, Hi, April. Susan. And we'll see Susan oh, Roberts Susan. in hey. here. I just saw Susan's her. the one that got his Ashmore that we're going to okay. meet up with Saturday. You're going to have so much fun there. I love Ashmore. Oh, her and Mike. And if you see, awesome. 
Well, if you see Robin Terry, you better hug him for me. Yeah. Because I just love like that said, man. I don't know if he will be there. I, You know, all three times, other times I've been up there, I've never seen him. Never really? have. Well, he came to he came to Sloss. Somebody was coming to Sloss to do an investigation, and he told me, and I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" So, um, yep, we had ready. breakfast. We had breakfast together when he was down here. So now I did meet him. I have met him. Yeah, but I met him in Richmond, Missouri, at the Paranormal Roundup when they brought the uh, shag wagon down. Yeah, the Scooby Doo machine yeah. when he still owned it. Yeah. And did their skit out there with Scooby Doo <laughs> and Shaggy and all them? Well, I met him at Scarefest years ago. So, but I am fixing to start traveling again. So, to cover some of these conferences that are coming up. So, um, usually I do appear in uh, UFO conferences. So, I'm, I've applied for credentials for Contact in the Desert and the Eureka Springs you know, event. But probably also I'm going to try to do UFO Congress. So that'll be fun. But right. and I missed we'll Spearfest next, next year. Next year in September, you're going to Ireland, aren't you? Ireland. Yeah. What days in September are you going? Let me go to the phone. You go to because the phone. I, because I, I bet put them in my end. calendar. The it's 15th. Probably be the, uh, the 15th through the something. Yep. September. Well, they're on my iPad there. Why is <laughs> Why do I not have it here? 15th through the, the 10 days, right? I am probably going to be through the 30th. Oh, I'm probably going. Lori and I were talking about maybe going over to Scotland. Before we came home, oh, okay. Lori said the first through the ninth, but okay. September the first, the 19th, twenty and twenty first. I'll be in Paragold, Arkansas, Ooh. at the Ion Nation Paranormal Horror Show Convention. Yeah. So yeah. Well, I wouldn't mind doing Santiago's. I love Santiago. It's the same time you're going to be in Ireland. I know that now. So you too. It was in July. Raymond, hi. Raymond Triplett said, "Have a." outstanding night i hope yeah. you do too raymond thank you for being here again yeah he jumps in a but, lot yeah well i guess we're well, out of time september the first through the ninth yeah i don't have it in my phone I, if i don't have it where i can see it i never know because yeah. i've got 50, my calendar is so full so it's just crazy. But yeah, that's that's about the only convention I really attend now every year. Is This will be the third year I've been with Santiago Yeah, down there. It Santiago is, is a good person. Yes, he is. He is a good human. And Lori must be sure because she put it in there twice. Right. So night, she's Tom. looking at it. Good night, Tom. But I love Tom McNicholas. He's such a nice man. So. Yeah, he he had a meet up with Denise and Ron over the weekend, too. I saw that. He said it was such a nice surprise. Yeah. So, well, what, um, do you have anything that you need to promote? Because you got a minute and a half. Uh, let's see. This Saturday night into Sunday sometime, go to the Bill of Rights Network or Born yes. TV on Rumble because I will be live at Ashmore Estates. With Denise and Ron and Susan and Mike, David Glidden, Charles Ward. I love David Glidden. Yeah. We're all going to be over there. Pastor Gary will be there, paranormal pastor. So I will try to go live two or three times. And I would love to see that. Late Saturday, if it's going, we get it at 11 o'clock Saturday night. Right. So you might tune into Things Network. I might be on there early in the morning or late, late, late at night, one of the two when nobody's got a show on there. I'll be looking for you. So we'll be over there, but you can tune in to the Bill of Rights Network, Born TV on Rumble, and check out all my shows over on the network that I produce and host. And, you know, always here, 
on Wednesday nights with Cat down in the back room, and on Sunday nights with Cat down in the back room here. So, yeah, yeah, I I do that other fun little show called Paranormal Experience, right? So, and nope, I'm on Paranormal. No. I do yeah, Fate this Magazine is paranormal Radio. Experience. <laughs> She's the voice I got of a Facebook ding. magazine. I had a ding in my ear, so it blew me away. <laughs> but um, that's funny. But, you know, it's something that I am so glad to be a part of. I love Fate Magazine. And to do, you know, to actually get to be the voice of Fate Magazine is really cool. So I like that, that too. That is. But... Well, I guess we're done. I am so yeah. glad that you came on with me, even if we had a little bit of a slow kickoff there. I and know. I want to thank Den I want to thank Denise Pridemore for stepping in and giving it a go and hanging out with me. Yeah. And you know, she's such a good friend to both of us. So we're very fortunate. So right. for everyone listening, thank you so much. Y'all are the reason that we do these shows. And just so y'all know. Those are parrots behind me. It's not just some random little thingy hanging down. <laughs> but I'm just, <laughs> I just realized how funny that looked. But right. anyway, thank y'all so much for being here. We'll be back next week. Same cat time, same cat channel with Carl working with me. So right. good night. Night, everybody. Good night, Carl. Good night. night.